this is just going to be like a little quick short one because of the other stuff I was talking about. Um, and you know, um, there's a lot of people who have issues in this life and they don't know that it has an attachment to a past life. And so it can be just such a, um, such a huge variety of issues that you can have in this life that are connected to a past life that you haven't dealt with issues because you died before you dealt with something, you carried something forward and you haven't dealt with it yet. And in this life, they try and pretend like that this is all there is. So why would you ever consider working on something that doesn't exist? Well, if you, you know, use your logic and stuff and understand, like, even in nature, you see things that are reborn over and over and over. They go through a cycle. And that is, you know, a soul also goes through these cycles. And so when you are... um when you leave a life in, um, you know, a, a fast way, you know, a, a tragedy or something, there can be confusion. And like I said before, you know, those people can end up being trapped like ghosts. <laughs> I just think it's so, it's so silly. Like when you think about, you know, a, a, a spirit being so confused and when they die, they're just like, continue doing what they were doing. They don't even realize that they're not alive anymore. And, um, the people get so scared of them and it's like, it's, it's sad. <laughs> I don't know why you would be scared of a spirit that is just trapped and is, um, you know, so, uh, caught up in, you know, the matrix of their, what they were doing or whatever. So then you have these other people and then they're born and they're still carrying in pains or whatever from past lives. So if you died tragically and you, um, it was sudden and, uh, you have some sort of pain and you hadn't dealt with that because when you die, you know, it's not going to have the same feeling. It's not going to have the same burden or whatever. And you go through your past life review, you go in and you watch and you experience your, um, your behavior, how other people experienced you, you, you get to experience that side of yourself of what you projected out and you get to see, and then, um, you know, you're focused on that and then you get focused on like, okay, well, um, you know, I need to change that. I should have seen that. Why didn't I see that? Okay. So I did this to you. Let's go back in. I, I, I want to play this out. Let's play it out different. And, uh, you let's, let's do this, you know, and you start creating your next incarnation. Some people may, you know, go spend some time just going around and being a free soul, doing free soul stuff without having to be incarnated, but you will still go back and be incarnated because that's what souls do. And so, um, when you come back in, you can end up having, the sun's going right across. I don't know if, it, if like you can tell on the phone when, on my recording thing, but anyways, um, it's like this big thing going right across. Uh, but anyways, so if you, um, like you could come back in and say, you know, you were killed, you were shot in the stomach. And then you died suddenly. And then you went and you um, went through your past life review. You saw your behaviors. You decided you wanted to go in and um, retry some different things. You know, and you talk to people and you go in and you start planning your next incarnation. You go in and in this one, you haven't resolved issues that were from this past one. And so you're going around and you've got horrible stomach problems. And you're just... Um, you know, it feels like you got kicked in the stomach all the time. You've got one stomach problem after another. And then you go in and you see, you do a, a past life regression and you go in and you see like, um, you see it played out. You see what happened. You see what led up to the shooting. You see everything that happened and reliving it and going through the experience. Then it, it heals it. And then, um, you know, people walk away with uh, a new understanding of life but also um wounds that are healed that um that they thought were current problems but they were really just problems from a past life and there are so many so many issues that people are having it can be something with weight issues it could have been in your past life you were starving and this one 
your relationship with food is, you know, you can never get enough because you starved to death in the last one. So there's all these things that people play out that they have no awareness of that they continue to play out from past lives that are injuries that they hadn't dealt with. That's why I've talked about that you don't, when you leave this life, you're not just, it doesn't just end. You still have things that you are carrying as a soul from all your lives, from all your experiences. And um, when you go through and you are able to look at those things, you can heal them in this life. And so if you are having some issues that you just don't understand, it could be anything. You could be, you know, scared of loud noises. You could be scared of heights. You could be scared of um, uh, strangers in a dark alley. It could be scared of guns, scared of knives. Like mine, I was, I, I still, I, I do not like knives. Uh, knives really, really bother me. And, um, and one thing too is a lot of times if you were injured, you'll have uh, some kind of a, a scar or some kind of a thing that represents that um, place on your skin. Like you could have, for mine, I had a birthmark. And a lot of times it will have birthmarks because there will be like, um, there's so many interesting stories. If you go in and you start looking up about kids that come out and talk about their past lives. And there's so many doctors who go in and do investigations. There's so many where they investigate it and they find the other people's families and stuff. And they go in and they find out all of the, the, the stuff about this other person's life. This kid can meet the family and uh, they will, the family will have recognition. And, um, you know, cause it's all in our, our, our soul. It, it shines through our eyes. There's a, a, that is like the doorway to our soul. You can recognize with eyes, you know, it has nothing to do with the body or something. When you see someone and you have that automatic attraction, it's, it's the eyes, it's the soul connection. And not all soul connections are going to be here just so, you know, like, oh, it's my soulmate. I'm going to have just the happiest life. No, if you're going to meet somebody as your soul um, partners, your soul mates, your soul friends, they're there to teach you something. And so you, you know, it can be a very hard relationship and it can be difficult and painful. But, um, there was, um, one that I had seen about, it was a one that was a kid and they did the research and stuff. They found his family and how he had gotten killed, but he had this giant, um, I think like a strawberry, it was like a giant birthmark going across his head and his, um, I think when he was a baby, it showed it went back across his little bald head and went across his face like that. So then when they went and they did the research and found out, you know, who he was and stuff, that um, it was something, if he was shot in the head or something, it was a traumatic thing that happened to his head right in the place where this guy had this birthmark. And um, when I had, um, like I was scared of... Um, the things that I have had with fears, I have seen in um, past life visions. And so this one, I um, I had gone to a psychic and it was kind of like, I don't know, it was popular back in the 70s or something. And, um, and I went with a friend and we went to go see a psychic. And I think, I can't remember, it seems like she was going to get a reading or something. And when I came in, I just remember this woman, she stood out so much. She was like, uh, she looked kind of like Gilbert Grape's mom or something. That's how I picture her now. I remember she was big. She may not have been that big, but I remember she was like this very large presence. And, um, and when I went in uh, with uh, my friend, she just right away started talking to me. And she started telling me about my past life. And, you know, she had this whole vision of this. You know, I was a, a gypsy, I was a criminal, I was super beautiful, and I used my looks to f fuck people over, and um, I was a jewelry um, a smuggler. I was involved with criminals and smuggling, and I was uh, on the uh, boat, and uh, there was some sort of an argument with one of the other criminals, and they killed me, and they stabbed me, and they threw me over the boat. And, um, 
you know, I've said I've got a horrible, horrible fear of open water. And I have a horrible um, fear of knives. And when she had told me that, it just felt like I, I felt like I just knew it. But she also didn't know that I had birthmarks on my stomach, which made total sense of being stabbed. There was a small one where it looked like, you know, kind of, but then there was a deeper one. And I've had so many stomach problems. So didn't just heal it. Uh, because I also believe like, um, I mean, it didn't just heal my stomach. It could have healed some stuff, but I, I continue to have major stomach problems when I was a kid. But, um, the, um, when you, um, like, I, uh, like trying to heal certain things like my stomach, you know, and then with, uh, um, with the medicine, when they put me on all the medicine and it just went directly in and attacked my stomach. Like my stomach is a weak thing. There's probably more more past lives that there was issues with my stomach. And, you know, if we get into that kind of world where it is about healing past lives and going in and um, being um, hypnotized and re-experiencing it so you can look at it in a different way, it's, it's very healing. And... Um, you know, eventually then maybe I could, but we also, we have all of these toxins. Like lately, um, my fingers, I cannot, um, my fingers are so, so, so stiff. I can't really even bend them. It's weird. And they feel kind of like swollen. And I know that is, um, toxins and it's causing inflammation and stuff and it's painful. And I know that, um, these toxins that they put into our, these chemicals and stuff that they are attack our bodies and mine definitely as soon as you know I feel like there's any kind of toxins I, I can always tell because my stomach will just get totally jacked up and like I'll just start going to the bathroom water my stomach will just start hurting I'll just feel like sick and um nauseous it's, you know, it's very uncomfortable and um you know, and I, I have gone in and gotten past life regressions. And one of the ones, two of the other ones I'd seen, one of the ones I had seen, I was a little kid and it was that repetitive dream I would have all the time. I was terrified to go to bed at night. And it was me, um, I was a black person and I was a skinny guy and I lived in like a jungle. It wasn't like a deserty jungle. It was like trees and um, in the house I had was like a, kind of like a, uh, like a, um, not a hatch house or something, but it was like, it wasn't like, you know, like how we have houses now. It was different. It was more of a jungle house. And, um, this large cat stalked me and I know it killed me and it played over and over every night when I would go to bed, it was just horrible. And then it would play out in different ways. And it was constantly, this invasion into my space of, of, and the danger and, um, not being able to get away. And I have a horrible, horrible fear of, uh, large animals that eat people. Like I'm terrified of sharks and I'm terrified of, um, uh, mountain lions and stuff. And mountain lions don't even go around killing that many people. But I, I think in this one, it was more of a, um, a female tiger or female lion. It was a really, really big cat and it was definitely in the jungle. So, um, and then when I went and did the past life regression, uh, the ones that I got shown, it had to do with, um, one of them, it showed me, uh, about it was being hung and there was somebody else there and, um, they were, it just, I felt like there was some sort of a, like a lie, some sort of a conspiracy, some sort of a thing where I was being punished for something I didn't do. And, um, you know, you think about how, how that would carry on into another life. And definitely as a child, I was constantly, constantly suspicious of everything. I thought everything was a conspiracy. I didn't trust, like as a child, I didn't trust the government. I didn't trust, um, I didn't trust what they told me about religion. I didn't trust what they told me about the globe. I didn't trust anything that they would tell me. I thought everything was a conspiracy. I thought everyone's out to get you. And then the other one 
And this one is the one that I feel like has some sort of significance to the life that I'm in right now. In this life, it was, it looked kind of like what I imagine, like uh, Greece or something back in the days when we thought about of gods being around and stuff. And um, the, it is, I, I always kind of see it as like a kind of like a cliff up in the mountains with um, the wind blowing and these curtains that, you know, move and um, like a palace. And, um, but there would be giants these giants that would come and talk and my family was well off and they had some sort of interaction with these giants. But then the government came in um, cause soldiers came in and killed me and I was hiding. And then I saw them, uh, they pulled me out from behind something and hit me in the head and killed me. And um, you know, I had suffered from migraines. I still have this, um, scoliosis like I'm sure that it has something to do with something from a past life that I could figure out how to heal it and I'm just looking forward to the med beds because I feel like a lot of this stuff is going to be healed and um but the whole point was that I was trying to get to is that there is a lot of stuff that can be in your life presently that could be associated with past lives so that there could be things that you feel are overwhelming to you that you don't even know where to begin to heal them where going in and doing a past life regression can be very significant in your healing it, it's remarkable it, it does a lot of healing for a lot of different people in most um cities and stuff there's people who do past life regressions you want to find somebody who does like qhht or bhq because that's what it's for is to do past life to for healing so there's a certain way they approach it and um you can find people but there's also some people who are really pretty well known who do it and they some of them will do it like um online like you uh can do it over zoom or whatever um what's that other one that you can do like uh so I Zoom or FaceTime. There's that other one. Um, I can't think of what it's called. It starts with an S, it seems like. But there's other ways that you can do it. So if you can't find one, like if you live somewhere and you're like, oh, I really want to go in and see. Like, I want to go in and see about past lives. And, you know, the first time you go do it, it might feel really weird. Like, oh, I don't know. You know, it depends on how well you can go into a... Uh, it looks so weird. It depends on how much you can go into uh, uh, that kind of relaxed state of consciousness and to be able to see what um, what yourself's trying to show yourself. So if you, you may need to do it more than once. And it's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. And there's also, um, you know, there's recordings and stuff. Like if you go in and you do... Um, a meditation on a past life that doesn't mean you're gonna get stuck there or something like you could go in and do a meditation tape that takes you into a past life and um you know tell your guides tell yourself you know that you want to see something you want to heal blah 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 you want to have a deeper understanding of it or whatever and then um you do that meditation things will be shown to you you will have uh you will have an experience and, you know, I don't know it'll be an experience you wanted to have, but you won't get stuck there. You won't be stuck like, you know, trapped in this uh, other reality or something. And um, so anyways, you know, it is a good time to, um, there's so many practitioners out there. And it, this is a good time to focus on those healing of all of the different aspects of self. And, you know, it could be that that is a very, um, you know, it's like a, a rock in your shoe, something that happened in a past life. And it could just propel you into so much healing just by dealing with that. So, yeah, if you can't afford it, there's um, different people who have got meditations online. Um, but the people who do it, you know, who are individual, like you are doing it with that person that it will be a lot more productive, I would say. So try maybe a first one with the, um, the recordings and see, you know, how well can you go into hypnosis? How well can you relax? 
and, and see what you can see and then see like, oh, well, is it worth it? Do I really want to go pay, you know, a couple hundred dollars for somebody? And it's, um, when you go do those past life regressions, it's like a four, five, six hour session. It's a long, it's a long session that you go into. So, and you spend time talking with the person about the different issues so they know like what to, um, talk to you about and help you to heal. So they're very productive. So that's all I wanted to say is like, if you, um, hopefully, hopefully people are going in and listening and trying to get the idea that reincarnation is our real life. And, uh, you know, that there is healing that can be done with, um, you know, looking at your old past lives. So, you know, that's all I can say. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, look into it and it can be very significant in your healing. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.